Hello and welcome to my retro watches. This video is gonna be an unboxing of this box here. Uh, and it's got my brand new watch in there from Stratton. It's called the Stratton Competition Driver. Now I'm not being sponsored by Stratton. This is a watch that I bought out of my own hard earned money. It was 320 US dollars, I believe. It's my second Stratton. Stratton are a micro brand and they're a brilliant brand as far as I'm concerned. They make the most cool looking sort of retro vintage inspired chronograph watches that have usually got a, a racing theme to them uh, one way or another because the owner Kyle, who cannot do enough for you when you buy a watch from Kyle, uh, he's a real big petrol head. He's got a real souped up uh, classic um, uh, Alfa Romeo and I believe we're going to see that because it's on the case back of this watch. So I've been dying to do this for two weeks. I've had this box, two whole weeks, and the temptation to open it was absolutely immense, but I came down with COVID and uh, that took, <laughs> it wiped me out for literally two weeks. And I'm only now back in the land of the living and wanted to open this box. I really want to enjoy this watch. So we're going to go to the bench. I'm going to open it. You're going to see my reaction and then I'll wear it for a few days and come back do a proper review there with any niggles and all of the good parts as well, hopefully. So hopefully you'll like this video. Let's go to the bench. So standard thing has a protective sleeve on it with the logo. And then you get this delightful carry case. And this is gonna contain the watch, of course. I've already got one of these right here. So I, <laughs> as I say, I know the brand well. So here we go. Let's open it and see the watch for the first time. I'm gonna just cut straight to it because there it is. And you can't see it very well yet. Ha <laughs> ha ha. There we go, look at that. Absolutely brilliant. The yellow mustard dial is what I wanted so badly. And uh, look at the case, look at the brushing on that case. Absolutely superb. So it's got to take some of these um, protective stickers off and I'll get it sized up for my wrist first of all and then we'll continue. So here we go, that is the watch. Took all the little plastic cover, uh, protection covers off and uh, it took a while and I had to take four links out to get to my size. But it's all about the dial on this watch and this is why I wanted this particular colour. Screams 1970s and uh, that's what I love the most. So look at that. To me, that's brilliant. A mustard yellow with the orange hands and the uh, black subdials. So uh, initial thought straight off the bat, I love it actually. Um, it's exactly uh, as I thought it was going to be. Now this is powered by a Seiko uh, VK64 from memory, which is a mecha quartz movement. So basically you get the, the accuracy of a quartz and then you get the mechanical function of the chronograph. So if we start the chronograph here, we get the appearance of a mechanical sweeping second hand there for the chronograph, which is fantastic. Uh, they do come, or they did come uh, with an ETA uh, automatic um, chronograph movement if you wanted that option, but I just couldn't reach that far with my budget. So uh, I'm very happy all the same with the Macket Quartz. I think it's really cool. There we go, a little nice easy, I say nice easy flyback, I haven't, pre haven't pressed stop. There we go. So uh, let's have a quick look around the case. Um, it has this starburst finish again, very typical 70s and another reason why I chose it. I do like that, uh, that finish there. They've replicated it on the sides and on this flashing at the bottom here as well, which to be honest with you, not really that much of a fan there. I would prefer the, oh, sorry, it's going out of focus, isn't it? I would have preferred the size here to being polished, to be honest with you. I think that would have set it off a lot better. And I fear that it's going to mark really easily. I have to be careful. I've got some of my hairs on here because I've tried it on already. Uh, bracelet uh, is nicely integrated to the case. Look at that. Absolutely spot on. Uh, really do 
like the look of that. And then we've got some brushed and polished links uh, on the, uh, uh, the clasp, if you like. It's a security clasp like that. And we've also got a, I, forget, I always forget what you call these, a milled clasp, aren't they? That's it. So nice, protected. Let's stick it on the wrist and see what it looks like on my wrist. There we go. It's hard for me to stand here in a really strange position to do this for you to see. So the case dimensions are 42 mil across that way. Uh, top of the lugs to the bottom is 45 and lug to lug is 22. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, it looks a little bit big, uh, but then I feel that's just because it's a square watch rather than a round watch and uh, they always take a bit of getting used to, I have to say. I've got quite a few square watches. But the initial appearance is really, really, really nice. I do like that. I am feeling that it's pulling my hairs on my arm, though, so that might be a little issue going forwards. So what I'm going to do now, of course, is I'm going to wear this for two or three days, get used to it, see what I like, what I dislike. I'll come back and uh, do some better shots so you can see it in the light properly because this dial, like I say, is epic. So. Uh, I will now finish this bit and I'll come straight back for you guys and uh, you'll be able to see the next part of this review. So here we see the competition driver in its best light, which of course is the daylight. And I think in the daylight that mustard dial still comes through as nothing more than sensational. Uh, I really do like Stratton for that sort of idea. This retro 70s vibe coming through in a brand new watch. Uh, every cover is based here, I think. You know, I like the contrasting subdials that are black, uh, the tachometer, and of course those uh, orange uh, indices and the orange hands all makes it look really, really, really nice. So here it is uh, on the wrist outside in the daylight. Uh, no filters applied, so you can see that there is a little bit of reflection, but then you're going to get that on everything. And then here it is uh, on a nice mustard strap that I bought. Uh, again, contrasts the colour quite well. This was just a cheap strap actually from Cousins uh, and I do intend on potentially upgrading it to something a little bit better. Because as you can see on the wrist, I didn't think it would work, but it does. It looks really, really nice. And again, I've got another outside shop next to my flowers. There we go. Um, does it justice, I think. So let's have a close up of the dial. Gotta say that color is absolutely amazing. And this dial is probably one of the best in my watch collection. Uh, the printing is top notch. I've had a look at it close up under the microscope and it's all really, really nicely well done. That font is fantastic. And I love the minute track and the way it's stepped and you've got the milliseconds, gives it that rally vibe. And of course this is uh, a racing inspired watch and that's where it comes from and Stratton do it very very well. Now we can look at the case finish so you can see all the uh, brushed lines there on the sides and the case top as well along with a sign crown and the high polished uh, pushers. So now we'll look on the other side and there you can see that I've got a little micro scratch already. That type of finish unfortunately does leave you susceptible to scratches. And on to the case back and Stratton's always do really good case backs and on the back of this one is Kyle's own uh, sprint racing car and I guess that's why the watch is called competition driver because he competitively competes driving that particular car and this is the photo they used for the case back that's the actual car there that you can see and the car is an Alfa Romeo Sud of course it's heavily modified but it looks pretty decent, so let's hear it in action. I think you'll all agree that uh, Kyle's Alfa Romeo sounds fantastic. I'm a petrol head myself. Not that I've got any sort of cars of any decent quality, but uh, I'd sure like a rip in that. So I just thought I'd quickly show you the case that the watch comes in, because uh, these are quite cool. Um, it actually doubles up as a travel case. So you've got basically two compartments. So you can see here what I'm keeping. I've got my spare, spare links at the moment. 
the strap, the instruction book, but I don't really need that. Uh, what would be lovely to be included here, I think, is a little polishing cloth, uh, which is something that perhaps, Stratton, if you're watching, you might consider something like that yourself. It's embossed here, and uh, the other side, of course, is where you store the watch, which is quite decent. Has the uh, little elastic there to hold it in place. Uh, of course, I've got another Stratton, so I've got another exactly the same case. So this is what he sends them all out. It's zipped up. Um, and it's very good. I've used them a few times actually, or my other one I've used a few times, and I've actually managed to squeeze two watches in there if you take that bit out. So, so there you go, that's the case. So now we'll move on to the uh, likes and dislikes. So let's start with the likes, shall we? And it is that dial, isn't it? Or at least the dial color. It's the dial, the square case, and the finishing that drew me in on the original marketing that I saw online. And that's what made me go to Stratton's website, open my wallet, and order it early to get it at that early bird price. Uh, absolute winner for me. It harks back to the 70s, that sort of design. And 70s is retro, and of course, I'm called My Retro Watches. And that's why I like these sort of designs. Uh, the case is made from a 316L stainless steel, as I think most of them are nowadays. It's got sapphire crystal, so you're getting the reliability like that of good quality materials. The, uh, the bracelet itself is uh, solid stainless. Uh, and you've got the brushed and the polished uh, finished links. Because the links are quite small, it hugs the wrist really, really well. And that's important because the way they've executed the end links to get them so flush to the case is wonderful. And when it's on your wrist and the case, uh, the, the, sorry, the case, the strap is bent round like that, you don't get any end link protrusion, which you do on other watches. And it just, it's just those little attention to detail like that that I think is so, so good. Well thought out, definitely. They're a unique concept, Stratton. They always looking back at the designs and trying to bring them into modern day eras, usually by making them just that little bit bigger. But of course you're getting the reliability of a modern watch, aren't you? Uh, absolutely awesome. I could talk for ages about what I like, but I think personally the watch speaks for itself. So what are my dislikes? What could I not like about this watch? Well, there is a few little things in fairness. Maybe they're minor, they're just my own personal uh, opinion. So of course, I mentioned it right near the start, the sides. So I wish that this part here was high polished. I think that would have set it apart a lot better. That's just my own personal view. Uh, maybe you agree, maybe you don't. So I think that could have been done. Equally, the... Um, the starburst finish that we talk about so that goes around the edge there now it is absolutely lovely don't get me wrong it's lovely and even you can see there but uh, it's kind of rounded in certain lights you can sort of see it and if you look at the render I'll put the render up now of the original one uh, it's a lot sharper and on many uh, vintage well, 70s watches that I've got that have got this particular finish, it is a lot flat. So it's not quite, it just does look a bit rounded. And there's many reasons for that, but mainly it's just how they've manufactured it. I've seen it done in the real on a Rolex in a, in a watch repair shop, and they use a particular type of machine. I know what it is. And they just, they basically have a jig that fits the case and it rotates on some. Um, abrasive paper really but the paper's on a metal disc and I think it's the hard backing of the disc that creates the sharp edge so perhaps when this has been offered up to whatever abrasive they've used which probably is a belt or something like that um, it is just slightly rounded it off so it is a grumble uh, only because I like my case finishing and it doesn't quite live up to the picture that we saw to start with. But I can forgive it because, again, this isn't a £10,000 watch. This is a watch for a few hundred dollars. One thing that I think could have been done better, personally, it's a big dial. And don't get me wrong, of course, I like the dial a lot. But it would have been nice to have... Uh, the sub dials with some sort of whether they would either be recessed into the dial or have some embossing on the outside ring just to, just to give them some depth I think really because at the moment it's all one it's all flat I've got to can't bring it too close to the camera but you can kind of see there so it's it's nice but it could have just been that little bit better and it would have looked absolutely fantastic 
Uh, another thing that would worry me and still does with this replacement crystal, the crystal sapphire. Um, so it's scratch resistant. But if you do drop this and break it or chip it, are you going to be able to buy one of those crystals? Personally, I don't know because it's probably pretty unique to this case. I don't know whether Stratton offer parts for watches. I've never uh, cared to ask really, so perhaps I, I should. Um, one other little thing. Now this is really possibly taking the mickey, I don't know. So when we look at the, the, the crazy case back, uh, it's not good in this light because you can't quite see the car. I would like to have seen the case back lining up with the crown so the car is straight. Um, I'm a bit of a stickler for this. When I work on Seiko's especially, I always try to get the case back lined up because I think they generally come out of the factory like that. And it's just the little, little touches, you know, that Stratton have gone to great lengths to make fantastic case backs. I'm going to show you now my favorite, which is on their model called the Speciale, uh, which is a rev counter. And I think that is absolutely phenomenal. But it's kind of just skewed. If that was lined up a little bit better, it just offers that little bit extra uh, finesse uh, and attention to detail, really. So perhaps, again, uh, if Kyle is listening, it might be something he wants to uh, think about. Now, lastly, straps. So I've got two things to say about strap changes. The first one is if you change the strap on this, you need to use curved spring bars if you're going to use a leather strap or something similar to that um, i found that out the hard way i went and bought my my strap it's got straight straight i uh, can't even say it straight uh, spring bars and the case is just too close to the to the lug holes and it chafes basically so you're trying to bend it into place and it chafes against the case and it actually uh, frayed all of my strap within the first few minutes uh, which was disappointing to be honest with you and it would be really annoying if I'd spent 50 euros on a really good strap Unfortunately, I only paid 10 pounds for the straps. So it's not the end of the world uh, But it's something to be mindful of so, you know I do like to change things around a little bit and curved spring bars you can buy them. I actually bought a tool I'm just gonna find it Typical me. I bought this tool. Here's a pair of pliers and it's bent and you can squeeze them so I made my own and it remedied the problem straight away, but so if you're going to get something like this, then that should be mentioned uh, or perhaps uh, uh, Stratton should put actually put it on their, their website. Uh, coupling with that, actually trying to put the uh, bracelet back on, I found particularly difficult. The end links are really, really chunky on this. And don't get me wrong, again, I like it because it gives it this lovely flat finish. But to get the spring bars in the hole, is really, really, really difficult. And you can even mark the case. You can see it. I've just marked it there with the spring bar tool that I've been using. So it's aggravating because you can get one in, but the other one never seems to go in quite right. You think the spring bar is bent, but it's not. And it just takes a little bit of messing around. And I'm experienced at this sort of stuff. So perhaps it's just this particular watch, um, but it is just a little gripe. There's nothing, uh, <laughs> there's nothing the manufacturer could do to change that, that's for certain. So I said I had another Stratton and I thought I'd better bring it in for the uh, end of the video. And you can see it here. This is called the Synchro. And I bought this particular one back in, I think, 2007. Uh, really, really nice. Again, design. You can see the retro flavor of the uh, sub dials there. Um, absolutely wonderful thing. I absolutely love this one again to bits. Completely different case finishing. You can see here a lot more attention to detail in many respects. You've got brushed. You've got this polished cut in because it's got a, like an undercut inside there. And then the uh, well, <laughs> that, that edge that I now don't like on the other model, uh, a great case back. Uh, what more do you want? The bezel is absolutely fantastic too. And it's uh, got loom on it as well. So it uh, looks wonderful in the dark. And this one actually came with a mesh strap as well. So I got best of the both worlds there. So they are my two Strattons. This is my personal review on the competition driver. I hope you uh, liked my review. I don't do too many of them, uh, so I do appreciate any feedback you might have. Uh, mainly though, on the watch. Tell me what you guys think of the watch. Uh, would you buy one? Do you think it's value for money? Do you like the unique design? Of course, please, I've got a link down below to their website. Now this is an affiliate, of course. Just go and have a look if you like this sort of designs. 
have a look at everything that uh, Stratton have to offer because they've got plenty of designs and it's a company that I think you should follow uh, potentially because that way you're going to get the early deals if you want to buy something in the future. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, that tells the Google's algorithm that it's nice, a good video, and it will offer it up to other people to watch. Of course, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification, and that way you'll be notified of any new content. And I've got new content coming very soon. Back onto the usual things. I've got some watches that need fixing. So stay tuned for those, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.